In this video, I'm going to try to give you pointers about how to work with word problems, how to take the information that you're given and turn it into an equation so that then you can do uh, more work with it, set up tables, make a graph, answer questions. Uh, the one thing I want to remind you is that word problems really just take practice, but if you follow these tips, you should be able to work through them a little bit easier. First, let's talk about your variables. You need to start by defining your variables. And when I say that, that includes stating which letter you're going to use and specifically describing what that letter is going to represent, including the units of measurement. So we know that x and y is uh, our most common variables that we use algebraically, x being the independent variable and y being the dependent variable. But a lot of times when you're doing word problems, it's a little more convenient and easier to understand if we use different letters that connect more naturally to what they're representing. So for example, if I have time or distance, uh, it might make more sense to use t or d because it more naturally reminds me of what those variables are representing when I use them in the equation. However, it is still important to remember as you work with those other letters, which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable. So that way, if you need to make a graph or you need to make a table, you'll be able to put them in the right places. Uh, if you do have a variable of time, that is almost always going to be the independent variable in that situation. Not always, almost always though, time is going to be independent variable. Make sure you remember to include the units in that variable uh, description and definition. Are you measuring in seconds, in hours, in weeks, in years, in centuries, right? You need to make sure that you include that. Um, as far as your dependent variable, sometimes it's easiest to start figuring out which one is the dependent variable. Which variable depends on knowing the other value? That's going to be your dependent variable. Um, so sometimes it's easier actually to decide this one first. And it could be a matter of just stating the relationship both ways. Does time depend on distance or does distance depend on time? And that's just an example, it would depend on the rest of the story. So once you can figure that out, make that your dependent variable and go from there. Um, after you've defined your variables, your next goal is to write an equation to represent the relationship between those two variables. Uh, sometimes that's easier said than done. Sometimes it is really obvious by looking at the story. Um, but if you're not exactly sure how to write the equation based off of the description, remember to look for the things that we've been working with that we know are important parts of our equation. So for example, try to find the rate in the problem. And that might happen if you see the word per. Sorry, my pen is not working so well. If you see the word per, as in price per pound, miles per gallon, uh, that helps describe a rate. You might also see something like a monthly or weekly fee or something like that, right? Something that happens every month, every week, right? That is a rate. Um, Whatever the rate is, it may not be simplified, so make sure that you simplify that fraction. If I tell you that um, it is $6 for four pounds of apples, right, you would want to reduce that. Um, and whatever it is that you found as your rate, that's going to be the coefficient of x in the equation. Now, if you don't use x for your independent variable, well, then it will be the coefficient of whatever, you, whatever letter you use for your independent variable. Um, remember that that value is going to be the same as the slope in your graph and the rate of change in the table. So if you end up taking the equation that you write and turning it into a graph or turning it into a table, that this is going to become the slope in your graph and the rate of change in your table. But that's how these things are all connected, right? They're all rates. The other thing that we've been talking about lately um, is your y-intercept. Well, in a story problem, it's usually presented as the starting value. Um, some key words to kind of help you find the starting value is it might be described as a flat charge, a fixed charge, an initial charge. Now, those are some key words to look for when you're trying to find the starting value, if it's not already obvious. Whatever that starting point is, that's going to be the constant in your equation, the b, the part that's added or subtracted at the end of your equation. 
Once you know those, it's a little bit easier to put together your equation for the problem uh, and represent the information algebraically. Last but not least, we're going to then use that equation to answer some questions. That's why it's important to put in this work ahead of time. You need to not only be able to write the equation, but understand what the different variables in that equation represent so that you'll be able to use it in order to solve some problems. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that the PTA is going to have an ice cream social so they know they need to get some plastic spoons. They have five boxes of spoons left over from last year and each of them have 16 spoons in it. Uh, the company that they're going to use, they're going to order from, sells spoons in packages of 12. Let's start by representing this scenario with an equation before I even show you what questions we want to answer from it. In order to write the equation I need to define my variables. So what are the unknown values here, the values that will be changing? Um, well, one thing that we don't know is how many packages of spoons they will buy. And notice I'm being very specific, how many packages of spoons they will buy. It's not that this specific set of words is important, but I'm being specific with my definition. So I know that's one of my variables. Uh, the other missing piece of information that uh, is going to be changing um, is the total number of spoons. And I hope everybody's okay with me using hashtag for number. Now I need to use letters to represent uh, these two different things. And if you want, we can use X and Y this time, or we can use some other more descriptive letters. Um, I'm going to stick with X and Y for this first example. That means I need to figure out which one's the independent variable and which one's the dependent variable. Well, does how many spoon, how many packages of spoons they will buy depend on the total number of spoons they have? Or does the total number of spoons they have depend on how many packages they buy? The total number of spoons they have is going to depend on how many they buy. So that means this is y. And our number of packages is going to be x. So now we need to write an equation that represents this situation. Um, let's see if I can figure out what the rate is from the problem and what the starting value is from the problem. If I look up here, uh, I don't see the word per, but if I were to reword something, I could use the word per. Uh, the company they order from sells spoons, 12 spoons per package. So that 12 is our rate. That 12 is going to be our m value. So I know that y is going to equal 12 times x. Now I need to figure out what constant, what y-intercept, what b value should come after that. So let's look back at the problem. Do I have a starting value? Uh, I sort of have a starting value, or at least I have enough information to figure out a starting value. We start off with five boxes of spoons that each have 16 spoons. So I can do that and I can do some math and find that we begin with 80 spoons. So 80 is my constant, it's my starting value. So I have the equation y equals 12x plus 80. The total number of spoons is equal to 12 times how many packages they buy plus the 80 we already had left over from last year. That makes sense. So now let's see how we can use that to answer a couple of questions. If they buy 10 new packages, how many spoons will they have? So I'm being given the number of packages they buy. So I'm being given an x value. I would want to fill that in for x and solve for y, which we know is the total number of spoons they will have. 12 times 10, that's 120 plus the 80 they still had left over, that tells us that they will have 200 spoons. Make sure we include the unit. Yes, I know it's in your variable definition, but we also need it next to our answer. So how many packages must they buy if they're going to need 272 spoons? So we want the total to be 272. That means our y value should be 272. Now we need to solve for x using our equation solving skills from last six weeks. I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides. When I do that, I get 
192. The 80s will cancel, and I'm left with 12x. But again, I want x by itself. x has been multiplied by 12. Let's divide by 12. And when I do that, I find that x is equal to 16. Uh, you might want to double check my math on that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. What does that 16 represent? Is it 16 spoons? No, it's 16 packages of spoons. All right, now it's your turn to try. Let's see if I can get this do now on screen. Oh, I can. Excellent. So you make and sell bracelets at first Thursdays on South Congress. You spend $28 for supplies and sell the bracelets for $6 each. I want you to do these three parts. Define your variables and write an equation to represent this description. How much profit would you make from selling 19 bracelets? And how many bracelets must you sell in order to break even? Break even means we don't make any profit, but we don't lose any money either. So pause the video now and solve this. Let's see how you did. First, we need to define our variables. So what are our two values that we're going to be keeping track of here that are going to be changing? Well, one of them is the number of bracelets that we sell. Notice I'm being specific. I'm not just saying number of bracelets. It's number of bracelets sold, right? Um, Number of bracelets that I take to South Congress, number of bracelets that I make. Nope, that's not what we're talking about. The number of bracelets sold. Uh, I also need another variable. And if I look ahead, hmm, we're being talking about profit. So it looks like profit is the other thing that I need to keep track of. And we're going to measure that in dollars, right? Profit is how much money you make. So now I need some variables to represent this. Um, I'm going to use some descriptive variables this time instead of x and y, but it will still help me to remember which one of these is independent and which one is dependent. The number of bracelets sold depends on profit, or profit depends on the number of bracelets sold. So profit depends on the number of bracelets sold. That means this is going to be the dependent variable, and this is going to be the independent variable, just in case I need to refer back to that. But I'm not going to use x and y this time. Let's use p for profit and B for the number of bracelets sold. <coughs> we need to figure out a way of representing the relationship described here with an equation. I spend $28 for supplies and I sell the bracelets for $6 each. That each is a big clue. That is our rate, $6 per bracelet. So $6 times the number of bracelets. Now, if my 6 and my B are too hard to uh, tell apart, maybe you want to use a capital B, but I'll try to make sure that I uh, differentiate them really well. Um, I don't have Y equals this, right? And this time I have P equals. And I still need my constant back here, which generically we talk about as being B, but since B is number of bracelets sold, we're just going to refer to it as the constant in the equation. My profit is $6 times the number of bracelets I make, Oh, but wait, I had to invest $28 in supplies. So that's going to affect my profit. I am already down $28. So P is equal to 6B minus 28. Now let's see if we can use this equation to answer parts B and C. How much profit would you make from selling 19 bracelets? All right, well, how much profit would you make? I'm going to be solving for P based on B equaling 19. So. P equals 6 times 19 minus 28. 9 times 6 is 54. Carry the 5, add it to the 6. I get 114 minus 28. And when I do that subtraction, I believe I end up at 86. 86 what? $86 is my answer to part B. Because I solved for P profit, Profit is measured in dollars, so $86 is my profit. For letter C, how many bracelets must you sell in order to break even? Well, as I described earlier, breaking even means no profit, but no loss either. So how am I going to fill in my equation in order to figure this out? Well, break even happens when my profit is $0. So how many bracelets do I have to sell in order to make $0 profit. Let's see. 
I need to get B by itself, so I'm going to add 28 to both sides. 6B equals 28. Divide by 6. That tells me that it's four bracelets that I need to sell in order to break even. Sorry, I'll show you the bottom of my work there.